if you have been struggling with weight loss, maybe you've been trying diets and maybe you tried exercise and you're just like so frustrated because nothing is working, you have to tune in. Our beautiful guest here, Christina. Hi, Christina. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to give you a proper introduction here, but she knows a thing or two about that. And sometimes there are things that are extra challenges to weight loss. Maybe you've had a chronic illness or been given a diagnosis of MS like Christina had, and maybe there were treatments that added to it or other things that, that compounded the difficulty. And you're wondering, how do I get on the other side of it? Or maybe you are sedentary in your work. You're at a desk all day, which is mainly who Christina helps with this weight loss is she's going to share with you the goods and how it's not just about diet and it's not just about exercise. So we're going to go in and dive into her powerful story uh, and hear more of about her amazing genius that she has to share. I have just so um, astounded by all of what you've gone through. It's hard to believe what you've gone through. You're, you're young, beautiful, fit, healthy. No one would ever guess uh, your story. So we're going to dive into a little bit about that. And I know that that'll be inspiring and uh, for people. And Tell everybody, uh, so welcome, Christina Stathis. Uh, tell everybody uh, where you're coming in from. Where are you tuning in from? Yeah, um, I'm in the south of Mexico. I'm in Oaxaca. Um, I, I live very close to the beach. It's just down the road. That's fantastic. I see. Notice how I had you say that. <laughs> get, yeah. I'm just going to get you to pronounce where that is. Uh, I will. You'll do a much better job than I am. So that is awesome. So I absolutely love it. So tell people a little bit about what it is that you do and share with us your story. Like, why are you doing this? Like, then take us back and how this all unfolded. Uh, and, uh, because it's really powerful. I know people are going to be really inspired from this. So what is it that you do? Why do you do it? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you so much for that introduction, uh, Dr. Shana. It's great. Um, yeah, I help introverted engineers get out from behind their computers so that they can lose weight, gain confidence, and meet the love of their life. Um, now, I got into it. Um, healthy living has been something that's been ingrained in me uh, since I was young. Um, you know, my mom, she was a nurse, and so I was really fortunate um, with that. And she also comes from a foreign country. She comes from Haiti. So really different upbringing than uh, we have in the United States. And I started gymnastics at the age of eight. And that's really what, you know, woke me up and made me realize, you know, this is definitely something that's, uh, that's important to me. Um, I really liked uh, working with my body and realizing that okay it's not just physical movement but it's everything that you do to incorporate health and wellness and basically uh, practice preventative medicine yeah yeah it's so good and so did you grow up mainly in the u.s Is, did you spend most of your younger life in the u.s yeah, I, I spent just as much time in the U.S. as I spent outside the U.S., yeah. Okay, that's, that's cool. Okay, so you've got, you're off to a healthy start. And then I think, um, and you're, you're, you're doing the right things. You're, you're, you're being healthy. Like sometimes people are go off track and they're not living a healthy lifestyle. But you were, you were active, you're a gymnast. And then tell us about 2014. What happened in 2014? Yeah, so, um, you know, always had a healthy lifestyle, um, you know, um, I, I was a yoga teacher, um, personal trainer, um, and then in 2014, I had a health scare. I was, um, I was living in Australia at the time, and I, I flew to Los Angeles to help with a yoga um, training, and um, I, all of a sudden, I couldn't control the right side of my body. Um, like, if I took, like, a bottle of water and went to go put it to my mouth, Instead of going to my mouth, I just threw the water over my shoulder. Um, I was dragging my leg. Uh, I was really, really tired. Um, you know, somebody who's used to really, honestly, you know, could run a marathon. All of a sudden, it was I. I couldn't take more than um, a, like ten steps, and I'd have to take a. I'd have to take a rest. And I remember, um, you know, being in Los Angeles, um, teaching that yoga class. Um, I felt. I couldn't balance like I couldn't I couldn't put my feet together and balance let alone you know being on on one leg 
And so I decided that I needed to fly back to Arizona where my family lives. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, arriving to the, to the airport and I was just at the doors and the man was walking out and he asked me like, do you need help with your, with your, um, with your bags? And I looked at him like, well, no, I, I can, I can handle this myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and then once I got inside, I realized I'm not going to be able to stand in this long line and get to my gate uh, without assistance. So that was the first and only time that I had to actually get the the little cart to come and get me and to take yeah. me to the gate because I knew I wasn't going to be able to make um, to make that long walk. Yeah. Um, and then from there, um, you know, I, I wasn't able to drive the left side of my face went numb. Um, it was, it was, yeah, it was full on. Yeah. Terrifying really. And, uh, and so that led to them giving you a label, uh, a diagnosis and tell us a little bit about that. And then, and then how things went from bad to incredibly worse. Yeah. So, um, uh, when I arrived in, in, uh, Arizona, um, you know, I went to go see uh, an, uh, just a regular doctor mm -hmm. and, you know, she said, okay, let's, let's go and take you to get um, some MRI scans. Mm -hmm. When got the MRI scans, um, she said, okay, you know, it looks like, you know, you have some, some lesions here. She was leaning towards MS, but <clears throat> uh, you know, you need to go see a neurologist. We need to get better mm -hmm. scans. Yeah. Um, that's when in the meantime, the left side of my face went completely numb. Um, mind you, I'm still trying to teach yoga classes. So can you imagine, you know, standing up in front of a group of uh, people that you're supposed to be instructing and you can't even feel the left side of your face, let alone, you know, being able to walk around. Um, walking for me at that point in time, you know, we call it like the Frankenstein walk, you know, walking around with an eight pack, but <laughs> um, not, not walking so well. Um, yeah. So I just, I would just stay in one spot. Um, and eventually, um, I, when the face went numb, um, I said, you know, I can't take this. Um, so my mom said, okay, well, the only way that we're going to be able to speed this up is to take you to the emergency room. And so I said, okay, well, let's do that because, you know, my body's trying to tell me something yeah. and I don't want to just, you know, sit and wait, you know, who knows what else is going to happen in this meantime. Yeah. So um, I went to the emergency room. Uh, I remember, you know, being somebody who's, you know, super fit yoga instructor, they had to strap me to my bed um, because I was a fall risk. And um, so I needed to get out of the hospital because it was not helping me. Yeah. Um, but what happened is that um, on the day when I said, okay, you know, they're going to discharge me I had about nine neurologists come into my room. Um, they gave me the spinal tap. They, you know, they took the images of my brain. They found that I had three lesions in my brain, uh, one really big one in my brain stem. And they all said, you know, based on the tests that we've run, you have um, multiple sclerosis. And um, the way that this disease works is that we don't really know what causes it and we don't know the progression. So it can get to the second stage, which is progressive MS. So it is possible you can end up in a wheelchair. So scary. So scary. Yeah. And then you had some, so that's bad enough. That's bad enough. And hopefully most of us never have to go through something like that. Um, and so I imagine you just felt just awful. I mean, that's, there's not a word for it and just kind of fearful, hopeless. But then when they did the treatments, it, there was, an additional downward spiral, which is sort of the impetus for the, the, the next journey that was about to come was uh, laying the groundwork for the work that you do now. So tell us what happened then when the, the treatment started, they started doing immunosuppressants. Tell us what happened then. Yeah, well, I want to say, I mean, <laughs> when I mean, when they came to me and, you know, when they had that diagnosis, it was like um, my world just turned upside down everything that I had believed up to that point, um, you know, uh, it wasn't matching. Yeah. Um, and it was, I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. You know, when your brain is on fire, um, it's really hard to think clearly. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really scary because it's just something that you take for granted that it just works properly. And all of a sudden when it's not, um, you don't know what to do. 
Yeah. And so um, I was I was I was given a four day um, IV uh, treatment, uh, like a, a steroid treatment. Yeah. And then I was also put on immunosuppressants. And um, once I got the full dosage of the immunosuppressants, it was like the lights turned off. Um, you know, all of a sudden, um, the first thing I, I really kind of noticed is that when I was doing the yoga before, it was so difficult for me because I, I teach hot yoga. And, you know, I was having oh. to, yeah, I was having to go outside the room, I was having to open the window, which is not normal for me. Um, and then all of a sudden, the heat didn't bother me. Um, and so then I started moving closer towards the heater and I, I noticed that it still wasn't, it still wasn't bothering me. Um, and then I noticed, um, well, the next thing was, is that normally I was eating five times a day and then all of a sudden I, I couldn't, I couldn't eat, I couldn't eat anything. Um, everything that I put into my body just felt like it wasn't, it wasn't, um, processing at all. I noticed not only was I not feeling, you know, the exhaustion from the yoga, but I wasn't feeling exhaustion from when I was going to the gym every day. Um, I wasn't feeling sleepy, you know, I would just sleep, but I didn't necessarily feel sleepy. Um, and this might be hard for people to kind of relate to, but, you know, being somebody who works so close with the body, like I couldn't feel the energy. You know, like kind of like the feedback loop wasn't there. Like, you know, we, no, si no sign that you're full, no sign that you're hungry, no sign that you're hot, no sign that you're cold, no sign that you're tired. Kind of like the, just the feedback is the sensors aren't working or is it kind of like that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and, and, and a different way to, um, you know, I don't know how much people, you know, know about energy, but like, I couldn't feel like my energy. I couldn't feel someone else's energy. I, yes. my emotions were gone. Um, and once I started, you know, going to the doctor and saying, Hey, you know, first of all, I can't eat, like I can't eat. Um, and I'm going to the gym every day. I'm going to yoga every day. Um, and my weight normally would have gone down. Um, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's just stable. It's just stabilizing, but I can feel it's wanting to go up. And, um, they said, well, you know, you have to eat <laughs> because you'll be anorexic. And I said, well, that's why I'm here. Um, but I can't, my body's not letting me eat. Um, and then I've got all these other symptoms. All of a sudden, um, I went for one test because, you know, like not having the signs, they're thinking, okay, I went to endocrinologist. Um, and when they tested my heart rate, my heart rate normally is about 54, 56. It went down to 38 beats per minute. Yikes. Um, yeah, yeah. And, but, you know, they said, well, you know, you're just super fit. So that's kind of normal for somebody who's super fit. Well, 38 is yeah. not ever normal. I don't, I don't know. Like, you know, they, they, <laughs> I mean, 60, okay. If you're 60, 60 to a hundred is kind of normal range and, and it's lower if you're super fit, fair enough. But 38, I mean, zero is, 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 <laughs> it's not like if you're, if you're really fit, you're at a zero, that is low. And yes, that's scary. Yeah. yeah. And definitely, I told them I didn't get more fit since I, you know, have this new diagnosis. It's it's quite yeah, the opposite. It's the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, there's so many symptoms, so I'm trying to not not put everything because it'll be overwhelming. Um, but also, they found that I had um, I had water in my lungs. I had water in my in my stomach, which is why it was difficult for me to breathe. Which is why I had to stop meditating because when I meditate, I normally focus on my breath. All of a sudden, you know, I can't breathe. Um, they found out I stopped menstruating for a whole year. And so they found out, um, that that was because I had a pituitary tumor, um, and they wanted to give me, um, hormones, um, which I, I luckily didn't take because, uh, it wasn't going to solve everything. Um, I had, I mean, I, there were so many different symptoms at some point in time, my knees started swelling. They swelled so much that I couldn't put on like my jeans or anything like that. Cause I couldn't get them. I couldn't get them over, um, my knees really. I had to wear like stretchy. Um, I have all my veins were sticking out of my body at one point. Um, uh, yeah, there was just, yeah, there was a lot, there was a lot going on for sure. <laughs> Okay. So that's a lot. And, and I've seen pictures of you now and you're fit and you're on a boat in a bikini and stuff. So I know it's really hard to 
believe that he went from that to that, like the transformation. So how did that happen? So, so what is that rock bottom turning point moment? Like, what did you do? Like, so it's, it's spiraling down and spiraling down fast. How do you pull that, you know, up playing up from the nosedive? Like what, what did you do? Yeah. Well, um, as I said, I mean, I was, I started going to all different types of specialists. I was going to, um, natural, you know, alternative healers as well. And just trying to figure out, you know, you know, what is causing this, like what is going on with my body? Because, mm. um, it's just hitting every single system and, um, you know, I'm on a, I'm on a decline, you know, sure. and if it keeps yeah. going this way, I, I'm not going to be here anymore. Um, and so I just, I, I realized I'm not going to get the answer. So I just said, okay, let me sit with myself and let me just go into myself. And I said, okay, Christina, what is it, you know, what is it that you believe? And as I said before, um, my whole world, you know, turned upside down when they first told me that, and it didn't align with everything, you know, that I believed um, about myself. And so I decided, you know what? This is not me. This is not. This is not a right um, diagnosis for me. This is not my path. I'm not gonna, you know, end up in a in a wheelchair. <laughs> um, so uh, once I said, you know, this is not, you know, this is just a one episode thing. This is not repetitive. This is not my um, my diagnosis. I I went on a process of okay, if this is not the correct uh, diagnosis, let me go and find, you know, somebody who can verify that. Okay. You know, I don't have this. I don't have this um, condition, and so I went everywhere. I went to Barrow's Clinic. I went to all different types of neurologists, and I actually ended up going back to the first neurologist I saw when I came out of the hospital. Um, and he looked at, you know, he looked at my scans, and he said, "Okay, you know, um, when I look at these scans, because the first time they couldn't pull them up." Yeah. Uh, you know, there is, you know, there are some lesions here, but these are not consistent with um, multiple sclerosis. Um, and then eventually I went and I saw um, a different, uh, I went to the emergency room for another thing. And they actually looked, they took new scans of me and they said, okay, not only do we not see any uh, lesions here, um, but we don't even see any signs of you having lesions in the first place. So um, that was uh, that was something that I, I started doing, and then I went back to you know the practices that um, that had kept me um, going before before all this happened. Like I said, I stopped meditating, and it just took me away from my spiritual practice. So that was that was a key thing was okay to bring myself back was to go back to my spiritual practice to align myself with that type of community to go back to meditating, even though it was hard to breathe. Um, just to bring myself back into alignment. The power of the mind there. And it really started with, you know, asking yourself, okay, Christina, what do I believe? What do I believe? And do I believe that? And I think that's really very powerful. And and all the evidence is pointing <laughs> you to believe that you have this. Um, and then you took this other. And by the way, we're not we're not even really going to be talking about uh, MS in this. And you're not saying telling people, you know, <laughs> you know obviously, uh, even though I am a doctor, I'm not your doctor, you're always going to want to consult with your own healthcare professional about what's right for you. And and you did consult with all these professionals along the way. Um, but also, you took responsibility for your own health, your own mindset, no one else can think for you and really getting clear. What do I believe? What do I want to do? What do you got to lose? Really? You know, like <laughs> you can, you can have these symptoms and believe that you are on this downward trajectory and there's nothing you can do, or you can have these symptoms and say, yep, I have this, but I believe that, you know, I, I don't believe I'm this diagnosis. I don't believe I am that label. I don't believe I have that. I believe I am I believe I am healthy and this is a temporary situation that we have here. And and just to turn that around. What 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 came so I'm just thinking, you know, when they when they did the scans again and the um the lesions were gone, 
And I know in in that time period that you changed some, let's talk about your nutrition. And I'm also curious about the timing of that, but you changed some diets, but you were already eating healthy. Like a lot of people that I talked to, they were unhealthy habits. They got a, you know, warning shot or a, a last straw, things broke down and then they changed what they did. They cleaned up their diet and then they were good. Like we hear that story a lot, but your story was you were healthy. You're a yoga teacher. You're meditating before. And then you get this and then you get, then you get better. So what did you do in terms of nutrition? Um, well, so when, when I, uh, when I went to the point of, I put on the, the, the 40 pounds and, um, and, you know, like I said, that was actually when I wasn't able to eat, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I had to go through a process obviously of figuring out how to put, you know, nutrition into my body. Um, and so I started doing these smoothies. Um, I was making these smoothies um, with tofu and seeds and berries. And that's, um, you know, that's when like my body really blew up and um, it was all the wrong things. <laughs> so I had people to, are just going, to... what? Like, you know, because usually that's like, and then I did this. No, like you were doing that. And that's when you gain the weight. Wow. Right. So doing the, 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 the tofu, the seeds, the berries, the smoothies in an attempt to kind of, and so Christina can relate. Have you been trying everything? And it's not what you tried not eating because you couldn't eat. You tried eating uh, healthy foods and things were just getting worse. So I know that you know that frustration. So I'll let you continue. And you said it's all the wrong things. Tell us about why is that all the wrong things in your particular situation at that time? Yeah, so um, my, you know, with the medication, uh, it ruined my gut. And, you know, I didn't know that, um, you know, I kept, you know, people kept talking about leaky gut and I kept, you know, um, hearing about it, but I just, I didn't believe in it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and eventually, you know, I tried so many different diets. Um, I, I can't even tell you how many different diets, how many things I cut out. And I wasn't, you know, like I, I wasn't really eating that much to begin with. Um, and so, uh, you know, I had to, I had to focus on, on foods that work and it helped me to, to repair my gut. So the seeds and, you know, all that, the tofu was completely the wrong things. I really had to focus on foods that were, um, that were nutrient dense and that were nourishing mm -hmm. to my body and that were really going to heal my body. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also had to focus on, um, on, you know, changing, like somebody who is used to being very active and things like that. I also had to change, you know, the type of movement that I was doing, um, focusing more again on, on supporting my, my body, you know, calming down my nervous system and, and just allowing my body time to kind of rest and repair. So good. I, I think that's, really um eye-opening for some people and in it and but on another level it makes total sense you loved your body you know allowed it to heal itself be the miracle that it is you focused on healing your gut you focused on your mindset what did you believe calming your nervous system because we know how important that is and attention to nutrition but not not dieting that wasn't what we were doing we were looking at food as medicine like that worked for you so uh, so good. So good. And so you and you, you shift things, things around a journey to get there, trying a bunch of things. So tell us, you know, where are you at now? So you've done all these things with your nutrition and your mindset. Where are you at now? Tell us a bit about where you're at now. Well, I, I no longer um, have any MS symptoms. Um, I've lost the weight. Um, and um, my journey has opened my eyes and made me realize, you know, how many people are are struggling and that they're also feeling alone and and clueless as to what are the next best to stay, uh, steps to take. Um, and so I felt this, you know, strong pull to be to be that light that shows in the path and that guides them, that guides them along the way. Yeah, I can Im I can imagine that. Like once you've gone through something the hard way, like you did, then you would just want to make that 
path easier for people. So is that what had you become a health coach and decide to do that journey? Oh yeah, like definitely. Um, because the whole time I was going through everything, um, you know, it was, it was a, it was a horrific time. Um, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, it was just, it was just a constant thing in my mind. Um, you know, I'd wake up and that thought would be in my mind. I feel that, you know, that trauma. And even though I was there, you know, with my family and my friends, I still felt really alone because yeah. um, I didn't have somebody there, you know, to to guide me. I didn't have somebody there who shared the same type of, you know, mentality as I as I did. Mm -hmm. um, and and so I said, you know, if if this if I'm gonna stick around, <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna use this um, and and help help anyone I can to not have to go through what I had had to go through. Yeah, I mean, it always saves somebody so much time, so much pain, so much suffering, so much money. Um, if if you find someone to who's done it and who's willing to guide you through it, it's always the better faster, easier, cheaper way. Uh, that's what I've, I've discovered that in my experience, having done some things the long, hard way. Sometimes you, there isn't anybody. I mean, you were searching for somebody who could help you through there and you, and you get a little piece here, a little piece there, but there really wasn't anyone to be that guide for you. And, and you're like, gosh, this, this could be helpful. So, uh, so good. So, okay. So now you've become a health coach and you're really, wanting you have a soft spot in your heart for these um especially these guys that are introverts and and sedentary and and engineers and and that those kind of things and we, we can even talk about why is that um because that's not necessarily who you are uh but it you know might be people that were around you who are asking for help um so you know how do you work with your clients so you're helping them with weight loss and how do you work with their clients what does that look like yeah, well, um, you know, I, I work with my clients um, primarily virtually um, because it's just it's just easy. Um, yeah. You know, if, if they're if they're traveling, if I'm traveling, it allows us, you know, allows us to um, continue uh, working together. And, um, you know, I take them through um, through my uh, method that I, I, I learned they put together. Um, you know, we focus on we focus on, you know, their, their gut health. We focus on if that's something that's necessary. You know, these are people who are usually, you know, sedentary people. So, you know, we focus on finding the right movement that, um, that they enjoy and yeah. that works with, that works with their schedule. And, you know, if you're sitting behind a computer most of the day, um, chances are you, you aren't going to sit there and, you know, go to your kitchen in the middle of the day and, you know, cook up this fantastic meal. You're just going to reach for something that's, you know, convenient or you're going to order something um, and it's usually not the best food. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, helping helping them to um, to learn how to uh, incorporate um, home cooking and more healthy food into their into their lifestyle and um, also focusing on on the mindset because the mindset is so is mindset is so important. That's that's really something that's key. Um, if you know if if you don't have that mindset there you know and and you're getting stressed you know once you get stressed i mean everything kind of goes downhill right you don't yeah. tend to go and say okay i'm going to go for you know some kind of you know workout or you know whatnot um and we tend to kind of reach for the things that um are not beneficial to us you know the bag of doritos or um the gallon of ice cream and um, for that moment, it feels great, but, <laughs> you know, in the long term, it, it doesn't feel really well. So learning techniques that are actually going to help you um, work with the stress and manage it um, and actually feel feel good. Yeah, so good. You know, I think um, there's probably people right now watching you on their computer, <laughs> taking a look at the package beside them and going, or even the plate or the convenient microwaved food or whatever and going, yeah, this could probably be better. But the thing I love about you, Christina, is that you just have massive compassion and empathy for these people. And it's like, we start wherever you are, like no judgment. Like it's just, it is as it is. You are where you are. And then, how, you know, how can we have you be 
more of who you truly are, you know, more confident, more energized, more in shape and fit and, and healthier. Um, and we'll talk more about uh, some of the funny sp- or not funny, but some of the amazing spinoff benefits. We'll get to that in a minute um, because that's really interesting because when you start to get healthier, then all sorts of great things happen. But one of the questions that I always like to ask people, it's about this myth question um, because you have so much experience in this area. So as someone who has overcome serious health challenges and lost 40 pounds yourself, I know it doesn't look like you had that, but you had that. What would you say is the biggest myth, especially with uh, people like that you specialize in, these sedentary introverts, what, what is the biggest myth when it comes to achieving sustainable weight loss? Yeah, well, you know, people have this idea that eating less, you know, taking in less calories or, a, you know, extreme diet is going to learn, it's going to lead to weight loss. And you know, it's not true. Um, you know, when I put on the 40 pounds, like I said, I was, I was drinking those smoothies, um, mm-hmm. and I was working out, I was working out twice a day, which <laughs> every day, which is not, it was a lot more than I, I, I did before. Um, so the important thing, you know, is to focus on, um, you know, foods that are nutrient dense, you know, like I said, that actually, you know, nourish you and help to, re- you know, replenish your, your gut. And um, if you're someone, you know, who was going through like what I was going through, um, if you're cortisol dependent, um, you know, either because of treatment or, you know, stressful lifestyle, um, the extreme exercise is going to be counterproductive and it's not going to actually lead to weight loss. You know, it's going to lead to weight gain. Yeah. So, and yeah. as I said, um, you know, the other thing is to focus on your, you know, your mindset, your mindset is so important. And that was the biggest thing for me because if I didn't sit with myself and say, okay, you know, what is it that you, you believe, then um, I might have not walked down the, you know, the path that I walked down. So good. Yeah. So really like that belief was the pivot point. So that mindset, the exercise, the nutrition, and, 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 and paying attention to the, the gut health, you know, gut health. So it's not, it's not diet. It is a paying attention to your diet but not dieting. It's paying yeah. attention to moving your body, but not over exercising and abusing your, bo- not punishing your body for something you ate, but moving your body in a way that it feels good, that doesn't make things worse. And yeah, exactly. so good. And the results, I mean, that the results speak for themselves. So that is that's awesome. You've talked about nutrition and movement and mindset, uh, but you've also talked about like emotions. And I know that, um, Elsewhere, I've heard you talk about really learning about that food mood connection um, and and emotions. So why is mastering emotions so important? Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, you know, your your emotions, uh, your emotions not only dictate your your actions, but they also dictate, you know, your hormones, like how how your body, you know, secretes hormones and produces hormones your energy, your energy levels, um, and, and your digestion, basically, you know, everything, everything your body does. So you really need to know, you know, how to, how to manage your, your emotions. Um, so they don't go on a direction that you, you don't want them to go. Like I said before, like with the stress, um, and, and stress is really a big thing. You know, it's a really a big thing for people, um, you know, if you don't know how to manage your, if you don't know how to manage your stress, it's just gonna, it's gonna go, um, it's gonna go on overload. And if that's a constant, that's a constant thing, and you don't know the skills to be able to manage it, you know, it, it all, it starts, starts to change, you know, the chemistry in your body, it starts to change the chemistry in your mind. And um, you, even if you're doing the exercise, that's really good for you. Um, even if you're eating, like I said, the right foods, your body's not able to process all of that the way it normally would. Mm-hmm. So really learning how, you know, how to, um, to manage your emotions is, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's key. Yeah. So good. What are a couple of tips? So there are people here and they're like, I could lose a few pounds. So that's what I'm trying to do. I've been struggling. Maybe they have things as extreme as you, or maybe it wasn't as extreme of a situation. Um, and they're like, okay, 
this is really good, um, but what can I do now? What are some simple tips that they could start today? They can just implement it, start doing it today, tomorrow morning. Um, what are some things that, what can you share that can just kickstart them in the right direction? Yeah, so um, it's going to be things that most people don't normally uh, think of, but um, they are very, very important. So um, the first thing that I really, really um, focus on is like sleep. Sleep is so important and um, getting at least eight hours is definitely key. Um, you know, your body, that's your that's when your body has the time to rest and repair the first four hours of sleep is when your body does physical repair, the last four hours when your body does psychological repair. So can you imagine like if you cut off <laughs> one of those hours, you know, yeah. you're gonna miss out on some on some things. Yes. Um, so what I always um, um, tell people to, you know, I recommend people to do, you know, you start to develop a night routine. And the first, you know, thing that you do is one hour before your, your bedtime. So you decide what time you wanna go to bed, definitely get to bed before midnight. Um, I really, you know, I, I suggest, you know, 10 o'clock at the latest. Um, so one hour before your bedtime, you know, you dim the lights in your house. You're telling your body, hey, okay, it's time. We're preparing for sleep. You know, knock off all electronics, your computer, your your cell phone, and then just do things that are calming for you, um, whether it's listening to calming music or um, it's um, reading a book. I love reading before I go to bed. Um, you know, having like a calming conversation, you know, with somebody, you know, whatever that's significant to you or, you know, taking a bubble bath, but something that, you know, is just like, a, like I said, kind of kind of wind your body down, prepare you so that you not only have the eight hours of sleep, but you maximize those eight hours quality, eight hours of sleep. Yes. Um, the other thing that I, I really advocate in when I do my workshops, I love doing this. Um, you know, most people think of a salad, you know, salad is so boring. Um, you know, it's not something interesting. Um, people, you know, discount that, but it's a great way to get vegetables into your diet. I love doing it. So I aim to do a salad um, every day. I do salad challenges. Um, so I, I, you know, I recommend incorporating a salad, but, you know, let's talk about what a salad is. It's not some mushy thing full of raw food. Um, I suggest mixing raw and cooked food so i like to put you know some whatever cooked cauliflower or cooked broccoli or cooked um asparagus or brussels sprouts um and also uh play around with texture excuse me mm -hmm. so you know don't make it all mushy um yeah. i like to have some crunchy things in there um like some seeds or some nuts um some apples um and also play around with the tastes so you know savory sweet um um salty um mm -hmm. and if you want to put spicy sometimes i put spicy cauliflower or spicy broccoli you know throw some of that in there so that way it's interesting yes. um and then make it colorful yeah um so that way visually it's interesting in your mouth it's interesting um and that that goes a long way and then the other thing is um when you first wake up you're, you know, you, you haven't really had much going on in your, in your mind. So your mind is pretty open and that's really going to set your day. Mm -hmm. So it's good to decide how you want your day to go, right? You, you want to have a good day. Okay. Well, what do you need to have a good day? So listen to something, you know, that's uplifting when you first wake up. Um, I like to, you know, play affirmations, you know, go to YouTube. Um, I, I think, I think it's Bob Baker has the 10 most powerful um, affirmations on YouTube. Those are, you know, really good to listen to, just like 10 minutes. Um, I love listening to Oprah. Oprah always has great things to say. Wayne Dreyer or Lewis Hose, he does great interviews. Or um, I've bought some Audible books that um, are really inspiring. I like to listen to those and play those, play those as well. So those are some tips that I um, would like to share with everyone listening. 
Excellent. Excellent. Love that. And those are simple, easy to do, easy not to do, right? So do them, do them. They actually make a difference. Uh, setting they the time for your day, difference. getting your sleep, uh, all of those. And, you know, those those salads. I want one right now. Um, okay. So what are some of the spinoff benefits that you've seen when you're working with clients? Because a lot of times when we, we go after weight loss and then some other things that we didn't even plan on happen. And I just think that's always... Um, those bonus benefits are always um, so fun. And it's just like this, this special gift that you get for the, the journey. So anything that you can share about any, you know, spinoff benefits that you've seen um, in clients that you've worked with? Yeah, well, I mean, that's why I say, you know, um, you know, I help, you know, I help these um, introverts, you know, the lose the weight, but also gain the confidence, um, you know, meet the love of their life. Because once you, yeah, once you get the weight off, it's it's like, okay, you, you start to be able to step into the person that you always have been, because now you don't have that barrier that you felt was there. Um, and so I, I love saying that, you know, I, I say 90%, but there's, you know, um, it could be higher. Not everybody tells me everything, but, you know, about 90% of my clients, they end up getting um, a raise. And I've had people not only get um, one raise, but uh, multiple raises. Like uh, one client in particular, he got two raises um, from his company. Um, and then they got a new um, boss. And he's pretty high up in the company. And so, you know, once they got the new boss, he just kind of sent off an email and said, okay, this is, you know, these are the responsibilities that I have. I think it was kind of doing it to just let him know that I've got a lot of work on my plate. Yeah. And um, that's I'm essential. <laughs> I'm essential <Yeah>. here. <laughs> <laughs> and the new boss went ahead and, and recommended um, him to be in this, you know, kind of special training group. Um, I don't know exactly how it all entails, but yeah, it was some kind of special training. So it was something that was very prestigious, you know, prestigious and enough for him to share it with me. Um, definitely a huge pat on the back. Um, I've had people that have never left, you know, the US get their passport, you know, go on, you know, go on on trips and travel outside the country. You know, and people, you know, um, having better relationships with within, you know, if they do have a relationship, um, one woman in particular, you know, she had, you know, just um, maybe like one year before she started working with me had find, found a, her boyfriend that she was having a good relationship or close relationship with. Um, and then all of a sudden she was able to find her voice and actually speak, you know, what her, what her feelings, what her desires were, which before that, you know, that those were things that she was keeping to herself. She wasn't being like fully authentic. Um, I've had another man. Um, he said that, you know, when he walked into the, the gym that he goes to, you know, the, the front desk person and the other people that were there, they noticed, wow, you're like a completely different person and started asking him for advice for all kinds of different things. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's really, you know, this, um, this removal of weight, it just, it's just, it's just a first step and it allows the people to just come into a place where they do really feel confident in themselves and they're able to, um, to step into their skin and feel comfortable in their own skin. Love it. That is, that's so cool. 90% raises. I mean, how awesome is that? But, and especially, you know, to be able to stand up for yourself, to feel good about yourself, of course, that's going to attract better things and better people and better situations and better travels into their life. And that's so good. I mean, travel might not be a big deal for a lot of people, but somebody who's more on the shy side or who's by themselves and keeps to themselves and kind of, you know, them and their computer, that's mainly who it is. It's a big deal. And so, yeah, there's a whole big world that opens up to them. And so, yeah, what they're getting is so much more than, than weight loss. And uh, I just want to thank you for this really amazing conversation. Thank you for being so open and sharing your story. I know you don't share all of that. So often a lot of people just think, well, she's just really good at getting people weight loss, but they don't know the story behind that and what, what led to that. And I think your story is so powerful. So thank you for being so vulnerable and be willing to share. Um, and how can people get in touch with you if they're like, oh, I 
I, I think Christina might be the person who can actually help me. I think she understands what I'm going through or, or maybe, uh, or maybe they have a question. What's the best way for people to reach out to you? Yeah, well, they can go to uh, my website, which is um, awakeyourpotential.com. And from there, um, there's plenty of resources. There's a way to connect with me directly. Um, they can also find me on Instagram. My handle's at Christina. That's spelled the C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-A, Stathis, S-T-A-T-H-I-S. So at Christina Stathis. Excellent. Excellent. So yeah, follow her on Instagram and, uh, and definitely reach out to Christina. She's phenomenal. She gets great results. She's the real deal. And I want to thank, so thank you so much, Christina. And I want to thank all of you for listening in and joining us. If you have questions, pop them in the comments. Christina and I, we're happy to answer. If there is a topic that you want us to tackle, let me know. I will find that expert for you. And uh, be sure to watch our next episode of Health Coach TV and explore this issue of weight loss uh, under all of these different conditions a little bit further. So with that, have a great week. And of course, be good for you.